I found this list of the top 101 most frequent words that come up on the GRE from Crunch Prep, link in the description, and I couldn't resist making a video on it. I just thought what would benefit GRE students more, and indeed anyone who wants to learn more English vocabulary than the top 101 most frequent words. If you know every word on this list, you have a huge leg up on other students. In fact, you could leave a comment on how many of these 101 words you actually knew and how many you've learned from the video. Almost goes without saying, any new word you learn, put in your word list along with a mnemonic, a way of remembering that word. I've tried to give you as many as I could throughout the video. The list starts with laconic, brief and to the point, effectively cut short. I remember it as lacking many words, laconic, laconic, not using too many words, lacking too many words. It's brief and to the point. Jessica was so talkative that her sister thought the situation warranted conciseness, like another word for laconic, and her being laconic. Insipid, lacking taste or flavor. Too much sugar tends to make this otherwise delightful fruit pie insipid. The way I like to think about it is if something lacks taste or flavor, you don't really want to gulp it down. You just want to kind of sip it at best. Insipid, lacking taste or flavor. Rubbish, insipid. Pragmatic, concerned with practical matters. It almost sounds like practical, doesn't it? Pragmatic. After five years of war, both sides have found pragmatic ways to make peace with one another, as the bloodshed has grown vicious and brutal. Pragmatic, practical. Iconoclast, someone who attacks cherished beliefs or institutions. Icon is like an image. This is the etymology of the word. And class is to break, someone who breaks down these glorious images and shatters the image that people have of something. They attack cherished beliefs, institutions or traditions. Irrespective of his actuating motives, his deeds as an iconoclast will be treated harshly and is answerable in court. Someone is a true rebel against the traditional order if they are an iconoclast. Arduous, difficult to accomplish, hard to endure. If something is arduous, just think hard, it's really hard. It's hard, it's arduous, long and difficult and onerous, very difficult to accomplish. James and Matthew are planning to leave for the States next week for their masters, following months of arduous GRE preparation. For anyone who's studied for the GRE, you might say that process is arduous. It's not easy, it's hard, arduous. Profligate, recklessly extravagant or wasteful in the use of resources profligate. They take their profits and just throw them out the gate. Profligate. Recklessly extravagant. The Senate is particularly perturbed, worried, over our profligate, wasteful use of natural resources such as forest, oil, etc. Prosaic. Not challenging, dull and lacking excitement. It's kind of the opposite of poetic. Poetry and prose. Prosaic. Not full of poetry, just boring, normal text. The project was full of prosaic ideas, such as using sand and stone to raise natural walls around monuments. Boring, prosaic. Ameliorate, make something better. I think melio is flow or sweetness, so ameliorate, you soften something, you ameliorate the blow, you make it better. What have they said here? Increase in penalties and effective awareness programs would ameliorate the growing pollution levels and thereby global warming it may have generated. So to soften the effects of, to lessen the blow, is to ameliorate, to make something smoother and more sweet. Ameliorate. Obsequious, many people's favorite. If someone is obsequious, they are obedient or attentive to an excessive degree. A fancy word would be, they are a sycophant. They just praise someone like a yes man. They're just obedient and attentive, way too much. 
They hang on your every word. They are obsequious. You could think they are obsessed with you. Obsequious. All of these mnemonics, obviously, do write them down if there's a word you didn't know before. Or make up your own mnemonic. It was evident that the manager was flattering from his obsequious manner in receiving his boss. Flattery, or to be flattering, that is another perfect description of obsequious. You're not really being honest, you are flattering someone. You're being obsequious. Capricious, given to sudden behaviour change. Full of caprice, unpredictable, fortuitous, happening by accident or chance. It's just fortune. It's just luck. No one could have predicted it. It's fortuitous. Usually it's in a positive sense rather than a negative one. Something is fortuitous if it adds to your fortune. Not necessarily wealth, just good luck, good fortune. The alignment timing proved to be scientifically fortuitous for planetary astronomers because I guess they had the chance to see the planets. Orthodox conforming to all the traditional beliefs and religious practices. You could say the opposite of being an iconoclast that we saw earlier. Alice describes her childhood in a conservative, orthodox community in Iraq, keeping to traditional religious beliefs. It doesn't just have to be religious, it usually is. If you are orthodox, you're not a rebel. Alacrity, lively and cheerful readiness. I always think if someone acts with alacrity, They're ready to go at an instant. They're eager. They're keen. After marriage, Jenny rushed off with excitement to visit her parents. But her father did not accept their marriage with equal alacrity. She had alacrity because she rushed off. She was lively and cheerful and ready to go. But the father maybe didn't have that alacrity. Pellucid. Translucently clear. I think of the word lucid in there in the middle. Something's lucid. It's clear. If something's pellucid, it's translucently clear. The river water was so pellucid that Mary could see clearly that it swarmed with countless small fishes and loaves. I don't know what a loaf is, but anyway, you can inform me. Corroborate. To confirm or give support to. Usually to do with evidence. If you're backing up a witness or something, to corroborate evidence. You're confirming it. You're supporting it. You're almost elaborating on that evidence. You're corroborating. The police official said allegations of misconduct by the officer have been corroborated by video from closed circuit cameras. That would mean they've been supported and confirmed. He's been caught. The evidence from the CCTV has corroborated the allegations. Magnanimous very generous or forgiving. Most often you hear this word when someone's emerged victorious in a battle and if they behave magnanimously that means they're kind of forgiving their enemies, maybe being kind to them, not being ruthless or brutal. Magnanimous. Jacqueline's magnanimous generosity and limitless loyalty towards her nation and its people is heart-touching. Scrupulous. Diligent, thorough, and extremely careful. Scrupulous. If someone's scrupulous, they obsess over even the minor details. But in a good sense, it's kind of a praising word. They really take care to make things are right. They are scrupulous. So what have they said here? The health inspector during his usual visit found pests in the restaurant's kitchen and hence ordered the owner to observe scrupulous hygiene to stop spreading illness. The hygiene needs to be totally thorough to stop the illness that's going on in this kitchen. You need to be scrupulous, diligent, and thorough. Prolific, fruitful, present in large number. Someone is a prolific producer of videos if they're producing a video every other day. They're doing it all the time. A prolific author is one who comes up with many, many books, not just a few incredibly fruitful, producing fruit. Ryan is furiously prolific, releasing albums on two different labels here. Dogmatic, dictatorial, opinionated. 
comes from the word dogma, which is like a firm belief. If you have that firm belief and act on it, you are dogmatic. You believe in a certain dogma. You're kind of ideological, strict and firm. I would say it's stronger even than opinionated. It's firmly opinionated. Most Americans have less dogmatic, more open-ended views. Placate, make someone less angry or hostile. Think of the word placid, which means calm, like a placid lake is a very calm and still lake. So to placate someone is to make them less angry, more calm. Sam has to double stock divided last quarter and start working at an unsustainable pace in order to placate the company's investors and shareholders, to keep them calm, to stop them being so angry, to placate. Mercurial. Subject to sudden or unpredictable changes in mood and temperament. Very like the word capricious. Linked to the planet Mercury, which is believed to have sudden, unpredictable changes of mood. The mercurial senator, who retained office for more than 25 years, has frequently gone back and forth on his resignation. Can't make his mind up. So mercurial. Exacerbate. To infuriate, to make worse. There was a problem before, and now you're making it even more exaggerated, even more exacerbated. That's one way to remember it. You're not making things better. You are exacerbating the problem. If Washington does this, it could exacerbate the issue, make it worse. You're not solving it, you're exacerbating it. Redundant, something is not needed, they are redundant. Often you would say, instead of firing someone, you would make them redundant. It means they're not needed. They've said here, at first, taking a standardized test may seem redundant, unnecessary, to existing skill metrics such as GPA, certificates, but the GRE is necessary for the college admissions to sort applicants. I wonder whether you agree. But even if you don't, learning new vocab is fun, you've got to admit. Hackneyed, unoriginal and trite. Usually you might say, oh, that's a hackneyed cliche or a hackneyed phrase. You don't really mean it and it's not original. You've just heard it somewhere and you're repeating it. That's hackneyed. You're kind of acting a bit like a hack. Nothing original, nothing new. Girls dreaming their way to a wonderland to marry a prince and live happily ever after was already a hackneyed cliche notion by the time Alice in Wonderland was written. Prudent, wise, acting with or showing care and thought. To be prudential or to act with prudence, you are acting with care, thought, wisdom. When the food manufacturer discovered toxins in a product sample case of one of its containers, it made a prudent, wise, good decision to destroy all the boxes from the shipment. Prudent is a compliment. Unlike the word prude, which means someone who hates rudeness and doesn't want to see any rudeness on TV, that's the word prude, that's different. But to be prudent is to be wise, careful, thoughtful. Belie, disguise or contradict. Her smile belies her pain. If you're disguising something, then you're belying it, you're hiding it. Joe's cheerful tone belies the grim nature of life in the Indian countryside. You can see that word lie in the middle. That's a bit strong, it's not quite lying, but it's maybe disguising, hiding. You're belying. Esoteric, mysterious, obscure. This is a fun word. Wouldn't know how you'd remember it, but esoteric means out there in the, I don't know, solar system. Esoteric, mysterious, obscure. It's not inner, it's eso, esoteric. This person's thesis was a fairly esoteric mathematical descent. Not many people can understand it, quite obscure, quite mysterious, esoteric. Cacophony. You can think caco as like chaos, phony is sound. Chaotic sounds, harsh, discordant mixture of sounds. The baby was making a cacophony, or more likely 
the room full of babies were making a cacophony. It's not just one, it's a whole group of people making discordant sounds. The cacophony surrounding the multi-billion dollar buyout of the leading messaging service by a social networking company shook the whole tech industry. So many voices commentating. You can't understand anything in the confusion. It's so loud, it's a cacophony, it's a chaotic mixture of sounds. Impetuous, acting or done quickly and without thought or care. Acting maybe like an imp, I've said before in one of my videos, like a wild monkey, an imp. If you are impetuous, you're acting like a monkey, you're doing things quickly without thought or care, just picking things up, throwing them around. Michael is methodical, not the impetuous kind. He has a method, a way of doing things carefully. He's not impetuous. Someone who is impetuous is not going to be prudent, a word we saw earlier. Idiosyncrasy or idiosyncratic. This is a word I use a lot actually in real life. It means unique to that person. Her habits are quite idiosyncratic. Her way of drawing and her handwriting displays idiosyncrasy. It's unique to her. Other people don't do it like that. Not quite sure how you'd remember that. Definitely not linked to the word idiot. But yeah, idiosyncrasy. It's unique, not a, definitely not an insult. It's almost positive. You do things in a unique way. Modern technologies are a lot more expensive than their existing alternatives. And each has its own idiosyncrasies that be conquered. The grammar here on some of these is a bit dodgy. But anyway, we're learning new words. Extant. In existence, surviving. Those books are the last extant remain of her grandmother. The only thing left in existence, the only thing surviving from that time. You could think of it as a shorthand for in existence. Extant, the last things in existence. Several works produced by Shakespeare during his later years are yet extant at Rome. They survive in Rome. Obscure. Probably most of you know this word. Not discovered or known about. Uncertain. It's obscure. It can be something physical, like the clouds obscured the moon. You can't see behind the clouds to see the moon. But it can also mean, as it says here, uncertain. The origin of that phrase is obscure. No one quite has discovered where that phrase came from. Or, Apple Maps gave such obscure directions, hard to understand, not clear, that even after roaming around for hours, Derek couldn't reach the new church that opened in town. Didactic is a great word, intending to teach educational. I try to make my videos didactic, full of didacticism, intending to teach educational. Though more didactic, the story of the triumph over evil and of a king's dharma and nobility is quite powerful and enchanting. So it's supposed to be a powerful and mysterious and magical story, but it's also didactic, intended to teach and be educational too. Pithy, brief and to the point. That's a pithy phrase. When I insulted her, she came up with a pithy response. Very much like the word witty. Pithy, witty. Brief, usually funny, to the point. The professor was not known for talking much, but what he did say was always pithy, straight to the point. Even like the word itself, quite a small, quick word, pithy. Copious, abundant in supply or quantity. Kind of a bit like prolific, we saw earlier. Copious, there's so much of it. So when Matthew here has copious account books, that means he has so many account books, abundant supply of account books, too many usually. If someone's saying copious, they're usually having a bit of fun and saying, wow, you've got way too much of that. Ostentation, pretentious and vulgar display intended to impress, to show off. Ostentatiousness or ostentation is a bit of an insult. If you say her house or her presentation was ostentatious, you're usually saying it's a bit over the top. You're just trying to show off. It's not really a compliment. The celebrity is not having a good day because he got another ticket for speeding, only two over and driving 
ostentatiously in his new sports car. Ostentatiously because it's a sports car. It's intended to show off. Adulterate. To debase, often for profit. Usually to weaken something. Something used to be pure and now you are weakening it. You are taking away its goodness. Obviously linked a bit to the word adultery. But adulterate doesn't have to be just for marriages. It can be for anything. Let's say there was a, you had a favorite drink and then they took away all the good bits of the drink. You could say, oh, they've adulterated my favorite drink. They've altered it just to make more money. And now it's rubbish. Of all teas, I love green tea the most and would never adulterate it with sweeteners. Vociferous, loud and clamorous. Think of the word voice. Someone using their voice a lot is vociferous, or pronounced vociferous. They're loud. They're creating a clamor, which means like a loud din, almost a cacophony, as we saw earlier, but this is just one person. They are vociferous. The protesters were vociferous in their demands as they screamed using their voices outside of the mayor's house. Taciturn, reserved or uncommunicative in speech. You don't talk too much, do you? You're really kind of taciturn. Have you heard of the word tacit? Tacit means not spoken out loud, just an implicit understanding. Her and her boss had a tacit understanding that she would take over. It's not explicit, it's quiet, not spoken out loud. Well, someone who is taciturn is likewise reserved. They don't speak much, they're kind of a bit hidden. This recruiter has come across different types of candidates. Some of them speak a lot, while others stay taciturn. Quiet, tacit. Obdurate. That's the first word I'm not as familiar with. I think without looking, obdurate means stubborn? I'm not sure. Yeah, I didn't honestly look at that, but I wasn't quite sure of that one. Refuse to change one's opinion, stubborn. How did I remember it? It kind of sounds a bit like stubborn. Obdurate. Don't know why, I guess the B in there. Obdurate, stubborn. Stubborn, obdurate. That's how I just about remembered it. The teacher couldn't stand the obdurate, stubborn student. By the way, stubborn means, again, you keep to your views, you don't change, no matter what people tell you. It's usually an insult. Sometimes you could say it as a compliment, oh, she's very stubborn in demanding more pay. But most often you're saying it as an insult. You're stubborn. You just don't change. You don't change your opinions. Garrulous, excessively talkative. So we saw earlier vociferous meant loud. Garrulous doesn't necessarily mean loud, but it means you just talk a lot. Like a group of people at the back of a class, just always talking and never shutting up. They are garrulous. Though not garrulous by nature, so quiet, Ryan seems to be comfortable with the diverse audiences at the conference and managed to have several conversations. So that's not normally like him. He's not normally garrulous, but here he talked a lot. So he was quite garrulous at this conference. Misanthrope is an interesting word. A person who hates others. I think a slightly better definition is someone who doesn't like to be around people. Miss is bad and anthrope is human. Someone who thinks humans in general are not very good. It's not good to be around people. You're a bit of a misanthrope. You may have heard of the word misogyny, which is someone who doesn't like women. But misanthrope is someone who doesn't like any humans, just hates to be around people. People thought the old woman was a misanthrope since she wouldn't talk to any of her neighbors. Lionize, to treat someone as a lion, to treat them as a celebrity. Why are you lionizing that person? They're not perfect. Imminent. Probably most of you would know that. Something's about to happen. It is imminent. Any second now. People thought it was outrageous when the media predicted the imminent, soon to come, death of the actress. Frivolous. Trivial. Silly. Or you're spending money on some $10,000 watch. This is frivolous. Silly. Why are you doing that? Benign. Positive. Good. Gentle. Kindly. Opposite of the word malign. Something's malign. It's dark, bad. 
Something's benign, positive, like the word benevolent, gentle, kind. Even though the adverts claimed the energy drink is benign, positive, customers may experience side effects. Dissonance, a lack of harmony, disagreement. Resonance is nice, it's harmony. Someone's agreeing with you. Dissonance, no, lack of harmony, something doesn't work. There's a great deal of dissonance. Remember, dis is a bad word, like disappointment, disgusting. Dissonance means there's a lack of harmony. Conflicting evidence here. Inculpate. That, I wouldn't be confident to use myself. I don't know. I know exculpate. Ah, I guess that's how I'd remember it. Exculpate means to say that someone is innocent, to prove that they're not guilty, to exculpate. So therefore, inculpate is the opposite, to accuse someone, to blame someone. You're putting them in the problem rather than taking them out with exculpate. Exculpate is taking away their culpability through the exit. Inculpate is to put them in the culpability, to accuse them, to blame them, to put them in a problem. His friends provided evidence that could actually inculpate, put them in problems, to accuse them, to blame them. Docile, compliant, submissive, usually like a dog. That dog is very docile, it just does everything you want it to. Sporadic, occurring at irregular intervals, scattered or isolated. I used to release my videos sporadically, <laughs> once every three weeks, two weeks, whenever I wanted. Now I try to maybe do videos three times a week, to be less sporadic. If something is sporadic, it doesn't occur at regular intervals, it's irregular. In this example, their heartbeat is sporadic. Not a nice smooth rhythm, but a bit more unpredictable, irregular. Prevaricate, to deceive, to stretch the truth. I covered this in another video. It's when you're speaking, but hiding your true intentions. You don't want to be honest, you're prevaricating, you're deceiving stretching the truth. Because this person doesn't take bad news well, her brother always prevaricates, hides what he's trying to say when telling her something she doesn't want to hear. You're not speaking directly, you're prevaricating. Chicanery is a fun one, full of deception and trickery. Chicanery is like a funny insult. Ah, oh, him and his chicanery. He's always up to these deceptive tricks. It's not like a harsh insult, it's a bit of a jokey word, just full of chicanery. To gainsay. Sounds a bit like to say against something, and that's what it means. If I gainsay what you just said, I'm denying or contradicting it. I'm saying something against what you just said. I'm gainsaying it. I'm denying it. I'm contradicting it. Some of the officers were about to reject the project. But it had come from them. They could not well gainsay it. Because it had come from them, how could they gainsay it? How could they contradict it and deny it? Eulogy. Praise, exclamation. Usually after someone's died. You praise them. It's a formal speech where you give them a eulogy and you say the positive things that they did in their life. Logi comes from logos or words. So a eulogy is a positive, and you is like eudaimonia, euphoric, positive words, eulogy, praise, a chorus of eulogy and remembrance. Belligerent, great word, hostile and aggressive. Why are you acting so belligerently to me? Why are you being so hostile? Why are you being so aggressive? That fighter was so belligerent, she went for him. The moment the bell started, that's maybe a fun way to remember it. The moment the bell starts, the boxer comes out and is belligerent. Russia's public statement has been belligerent, menacing. Dispassionate. That's quite easy to remember. Without passion. Dispassionate. It's not actually an insult. To be dispassionate can mean just to be calm and thoughtful. The judge maybe was dispassionate in the case. It doesn't mean he was for or against. The accused just means he was calm, without passion, gave his or her verdict calmly, 
without feelings and without partiality. Fair, dispassionate, providential, linked to providence or fortune or God or fate. Something's providential, fortune has favoured you. You are lucky, it's opportune. Winning the lottery is of course, for some people, providential, but for others not. If someone has a providential escape, that was lucky. Sometimes you might hear someone saying, providence has favoured me, means like fate or fortune has favoured me. I got lucky, I was providential. Diffidence, lacking confidence. You're not direct, you find confidence difficult. That's one way to remember it. You're not confident, you're diffident. You find confidence difficult. You have a lack of confidence, you're hesitant. A lot of sportsmen attain prominence before they know what to do with it. Others put across a diffidence to fame while secretly craving it. They're pretending to be hesitant about fame. They're pretending to not really want it or have a lack of confidence about it but secretly they really want it. Fractious, irritable and quarrelsome. I again covered that in another video, but fractious almost sounds like fraction, divided, full of quarrels, arguments, easily annoyed. Fractious politics means everyone's divided and arguing amongst themselves. Malign, do you remember that one? It's the opposite of benign. Benign is positive and gentle. Malign is hurtful, injurious, causing injury. Mal, bad, like the word malevolent. Opposite to benevolent, which is positive. Disparate, essentially different in kind, not allowing comparison. Disparate is very much like the word separate. Those two events are separate. They're disparate. They're different. You can't compare them really. Or this musician released very disparate albums. One had this tone, another had a very different tone. They're different, they're separate, they're disparate. Plausible. That's believable. That's plausible. That definitely could have happened. That seems reasonable or probable. Astronomers receive data from the unexplored planet, which indicates that the possibility of life, at least in the ancient past, is at least plausible. It's possible, probable even. It's a reasonable assumption to have. It's very plausible. I'm going to believe it. To be sanguine. That's optimistic or positive. That person's very sanguine. You're feeling quite sanguine, aren't you? You're feeling quite optimistic, positive. Among those who remain sanguine, optimistic, about the nation's economic revival, there's always the lively topic of tax reduction policies. Venerate to regard with great respect. Linked to the word venerable, meaning old and respectable. Usually, again, referring to people with lots of experience that you want to regard with great deference and respect, to venerate someone. Here we're talking about a pope. In a nod to the religious customs of the Vatican, which popes here venerate and respect and follow. Someone who is an iconoclast does not venerate tradition. Trite, a bit like the word frivolous we saw earlier. Just silly, it's just nothing new, nothing original, nothing impressive. On WhatsApp, he sent a really deep message and her reply was just simply trite. Just a silly, commonplace, short response. Definitely an insult to say something is trite. Succinct is not an insult. That's brief to the point, a bit like pithy. Succinct is a compliment. It means you've said what you want to say in a brief and succinct, positive way. You've got your argument across without using too many words. Perhaps the most succinct, short and concise equations of wave theory come closest in mathematics to defining probability. It's a very succinct equation, short and to the point. Ingenious, clever, original and inventive. Basically being a genius. If you're a genius, the things you come up with are ingenious. They have genius inside them. They're original, inventive, not trite at all. Meticulous. Do you remember that word scrupulous earlier? 
it's linked to that. If something is meticulous or someone does something in a meticulous way, they've poured a lot of energy into it. They've been so careful, so diligent, so scrupulous, so meticulous. Careful, precise. It took years of obsessive and meticulous, careful hard work by artists and builders to construct the pyramids. Erudite, someone used this in a comment, for me actually, which is a compliment, it means well-educated, cultured. It's a lovely word to convey a compliment to someone. You are erudite, you are full of erudition. You are well-educated, full of learning. Consuming the books her father supplied, Miss Jane, who grew up in near poverty, became an erudite, educated, cultured woman and loved sharing her knowledge with others. To bolster, to support or strengthen. I bolstered my argument with evidence. The castle's walls were bolstered by extra fortifications to support or strengthen. Anachronism, an error in time placement. Chronos means time, so anachronism is linked to time. It usually means if someone is using something from a different era or making a time mistake. For example, if in 2020 you see people using the telegraph or using a fax machine, you think that's a little bit anachronistic. Why are you using that? That's from a different era. Or in a movie, if you see a, a movie about the Romans in the distance, you see a car, that's an anachronism. That shouldn't be there. That's from the wrong time era. Trivial, just like the word frivolous, of little value or importance, trivial. $10 is a trivial amount for the wealthy businessman. Also, some unimportant facts are called trivia. That's why you might get a trivia quiz. They're just not important facts, just basic facts for fun. To advocate or to be an advocate, someone supporting an idea or cause publicly. Now, I could actually make a whole video on the difference in how we pronounce advocate, which is the verb, and advocate, which is the person, like an advocate, a lawyer. There's actually a huge and important human reason why we switch the pronunciation there from advocate, verb, to advocate, the lawyer. But that's for a separate topic. I've learned that in language studies. That's very, very different. Maybe one day I'll do a video on that if there's enough demand. But for now, you just need to know that to advocate is to argue on behalf of someone. But if you're an advocate, you are the person who is arguing. My lawyer is an advocate for my case. My boss is an advocate for my promotion. Someone who's supporting an idea. Conspicuous. Obvious, easily seen. You can't hide. You're too conspicuous. You stand out. When people talk about conspicuous consumption, that usually means buying a mansion or buying, I don't know, a Bugatti Veyron. Their consumption really stands out. Everyone can see it. Innocuous, harmless and inoffensive. Very much linked to the word innocent. If something is innocuous, you didn't mean to say anything. It's inoffensive. It's not rude. I'm just innocent. It's innocuous. Nothing to worry about. It's harmless, innocent, innocuous. Audacious, full of audacity, bravery, recklessness, daring. Audacious is usually a compliment. Usually if you're trying to, I don't know, escape from a prison or jump into the enemy camp, that's audacious. It's daring, it's exciting, it's brave. Tumultuous, full of tumult, chaos. You could say full of dissonance and cacophony. Tumultuous, confused, disorderly. During the recent riots, the crowd was tumultuous and went berserk as the police arrest their leader. Confused, disorderly, tumultuous, full of chaos and tumult. Reticent, secretive, quiet. Not in your face, not conspicuous, as we saw a second ago. Reticent, a bit like the word retired. You're hiding away a little bit. You're a bit secretive, a bit quiet. You're reticent, retired, reticent. Fervid, 
intensely enthusiastic or passionate. A bit like the word fervent, fervid. You really want to do something. Opposite of the word dispassionate. Fervid means you're full of passion. You really want to get it done. You're frantic, frenzied, frenetic, fervent. You are fervid. Those words all sound the same, and that's for a reason. They all mean passionate and intense. During political debates, the candidates hurl fervid accusations at each other. Enervate. To weaken, to wear out, to take away the nerves of something, to take away its energy. If you enervate, you've removed the energy from something, you've weakened it, it's worn out. Using a smartphone for three years enervates its battery. It's now weakened and worn out. Certainly my battery is on my smartphone, it's ridiculous. Prodigal, wastefully extravagant. Remember that word profligate that we saw earlier? Very similar, prodigal. Someone who is wastefully extravagant. You might remember the story from the Bible, the prodigal son. That's because one of the sons went off and was so wasteful, full of parties and wasted lots of money. The prodigal son. And the word extravagant is linked to ostentatious, over-the-top luxury. Auspicious, favourable, fortuitous. Do you remember that word from earlier? There was a phrase from a long time ago where you'd read someone's auspices. That's like the tea leaves. You'd try and look into their future. So if something was auspicious, it was a good omen for the future. Soporific is a great word. It means sending you to sleep. His speech was soporific. It sent me off to sop, to sleep, to nap. Soporific. To engender, to cause something. My anger engendered a scream of rage to cause something to happen, to give rise to, to engender. Loquacious, talkative. Do you remember that word garrulous from earlier? Very much linked to that. Loquacious, full of loquacity. You talk way too much. You're a bit loquacious. But no, it's not really an insult. It's just a nice word. Someone talks a lot. They are eloquent, eloquent loquacious, eloquent, loquacious, talkative. And now equivocate. Do you remember that word prevaricate, which means to talk without giving away what you actually mean? To equivocate is similar. To avoid giving a clear answer or a direct answer to a question. He was asked a yes or no question and he equivocated. He avoided the question. Inimical. I used to love this word when I was young. I used it all the time. It's harmful. It's bad. Your outdated beliefs are inimical to progress. They're just getting in the way. They're harmful. You're not helping. Superfluous. Do you remember that word redundant earlier? If you make someone superfluous, you're making them redundant. Super means like beyond. So if someone's superfluous, they're beyond what's needed. You don't need them. They are superfluous. They are extra. They are unnecessary. Here's a fun one, fastidious, careful and attentive. Can you remember the couple of other words we've learned today or that you've seen today that link to being fastidious? Meticulous and scrupulous. Fastidious is very similar. Careful and attentive, fastidious. Now, if you want the detailed differences between those words, that's where it's really useful to go to online etymology dictionary and really trace the history of the words. It might sound silly to have like three words that mean very similar things, but if you look in detail into the history, you can find out the subtle differences between each word. But for now, you can just remember that fastidious is very closely linked to meticulous. It means careful and attentive. Recalcitrant. Her pet was growing increasingly recalcitrant, disobedient, uncontrollable. Do you remember that word docile from earlier? Well, recalcitrant is the opposite. Docile means obeying orders, just doing what you're told. Recalcitrant is the opposite. You disobey orders. You are uncontrollable. Recalcitrant. Ephemeral. It's just a passing phenomenon. It's not going to carry on. It's ephemeral. It's momentary. It's passing. That's one way to remember it. If it's just a temporary phenomenon, 
it's ephemeral, it's passing. It's only gonna last a few moments, a few days. Sophie always knew the relationship with Hayden would be ephemeral, would be passing. She just didn't expect they'd break up so soon. Pusillanimous, quite a hard word to pronounce. Lacking courage, fearful. I don't wanna use one word I could use. I'll give you a hint, it begins with the same first three letters, but that's one way to remember if someone is pusillanimous, they are a bit of a mm, they are lacking courage, they're fearful. Despite the opportunity for heroism, the captain led his soldiers into a pusillanimous retreat. Bit fearful, bit scaredy cat, you're lacking courage. And since then, the man has been rated as a coward. Next one is vacillate, to go back and forth, be indecisive. Please don't vacillate on whether to leave a like or not on this video. Just make up your mind, leave a like, leave a comment. Next one is ambivalent, having mixed feelings, conflicting. I'm feeling a bit ambivalent about whether or not to go to the party. Ambi usually means both. Have you heard of someone being ambidextrous? They use both hands. That's very similar to ambivalent. On the one hand, he wants to go to the party. On the other hand, he doesn't. He can't make up his mind. He's ambivalent. Enigma. Difficult to interpret or understand, mysterious. It's a riddle, it's an enigma. You might remember from World War II, the enigma machine. Very hard to decipher. Her expression was a bit of an enigma. Can't quite read it, it's difficult to interpret. Euphoric, intense excitement and happiness. Do you remember earlier we talked about that beginning, you, meaning happiness? So euphoric, intense excitement and happiness. The players were all euphoric when the government declared a bonus to pay to them. Pedant. Some people might accuse me of being a pedant. Someone who overemphasizes rules or minor details. Definitely an insult. Oh, why are you being such a pedant? Why are you focused on these obscure little rules? Just live a little bit. Profound. Most of you might know this word. It means deep, intense, powerful. Her experience was really profound. It really affected her and touched her, made her think. Or as the example here says, if you have to do a profound reassessment, that's like a thorough, complete, powerful change. Not just a minor thing, it was really profound. Inchoate, a lovely word. It means unformed still just beginning, burgeoning, blossoming, nascent. It hasn't formed yet, it's still a bit chaotic. It's inchoate, it's undeveloped. One day, it might be a proper thing, but at the moment it's a bit inchoate, it's a bit unformed, it's a bit nascent. The universe at one point was an inchoate assemblage of elemental matter, it hadn't yet formed properly. Two more to go. This is number 100. Lethargic, lazy, sluggish. If you're hungover, you're a bit lethargic, full of lethargy. You're lazy, you're being a bit sluggish. Don't be lethargic in your studies for the GRE. Don't be full of lethargy, be energetic. And finally, deride, full of derision. You're making fun of someone, you're insulting someone, you're deriding them. Why do you keep deriding his efforts? He's only trying. Why are you insulting them? You're riding straight over his pride, you might say, is one way to remember it. To deride, you're making fun of. And there we have the top 101 most frequent words on the GRE according to Crunch Prep. I really hope you don't deride this video or be lethargic in your reviewing of the new words because your understanding of GRE vocabulary is still inchoate at this point. I should probably stop with those rubbishy jokes and just tell you to like the video if you learned anything and have a great day.